Fifi Mangaka here. A great story gives us a ton of things. Engaging worlds, epic battles, emotional scenes, the whole gambit. And usually these things are the things that we most often talk about and most often remember when recalling our favorite moments in a title. But one thing is commonly overlooked, and it's really the driving force for all the things we love in a story the characters, and naturally, their designs play a huge role in all of this. When you're creating a story, designing characters tends to be one of the most challenging and fun parts of the entire process. But sometimes this artistic freedom can make us draw ourselves into a box. You're not though. There's only one absolutely crucial question you really need to be asking yourself as you're designing your next epic hero. The question is, why? You gave your main protagonist a scorching burn scar over his left eye. Why? You gave his best friend and sidekick a tattoo of a phoenix with one wing covered in ice. Why? You gave the lead heroine a beautiful necklace with a brilliant gem nestled at its center. Well, why? Sure, all of these things look super cool, and yeah, the character can stand alone with these designs, but when you ask yourself why you made these design choices, you open up the possibility for the silence of a character's appearance to speak their entire personal story into existence. Take Nami from One Piece, for example. She's got this amazing looking tattoo on her arm, and it could have just been a really cool design choice, except it's not. Prior to the tangerine tattoo that we all know and love, she donned this tattoo, which was a representation of her membership to the Arlong Pirates. After the events of Arlong Park, Nami got the tattoo of the Arlong Pirates' Jolly Roger covered up and replaced it with a tangerine and a pinwheel to honor her adoptive mother Bellamere and her comrade Genzo. So, this tattoo could have just been a design to make Nami look even cooler than she already is, but it wasn't. It elevated her character significantly, adding an important dynamic to her depth. This is the power of asking the question why when you're designing. You, as a creator, give yourself an opportunity to have even greater depth to a character and allow the character's existence to move certain elements of the plot forward as opposed to just throwing characters in various situations. But depth and meaning are not the only benefits of asking why during the character design process. Next, we'll look at coherence and consistency. When we look at the reasons behind our design choices, we also ensure that our characters' visual elements align with their personalities, their backgrounds, and their overall story. Imagine that you have a character who is a fearless warrior with a tragic past. I know, it's pretty cliche, but let's go with it for simplicity's sake. You decide to give them a unique necklace with a broken sword pendant. By asking yourself, okay, why am I giving him this? You might uncover that the broken sword symbolizes the character's loss and the burden that they carry. This design choice reinforces their backstory, it adds depth to their personality, and it creates coherence between their appearance and their narrative arc. We can also avoid inconsistencies that may confuse or disconnect our audience. When every aspect of our character's design serves some kind of purpose, it enhances the overall storytelling experience and it makes the character more believable. To note though, not every character needs a reason for everything that's on them. This is more applicable for main characters or characters that have significant impact on the story. Side characters, you can do what you want with them. You can do this or you can just throw things on them because you feel like it. If you're enjoying this video and you're learning a little something about character design or you're just liking the speed paint of my character Kinzi Akimoto from Ye Old Treehouse, feel free to give a like and subscribe. I talk about lore, character design, and all kinds of other things like that on this channel, and I really appreciate your support. Okay, now we're on to visual communication. When designing characters, we have the incredible ability to convey information and evoke emotions through visual cues alone. Each design element can communicate aspects of a character's personality, traits, or even their role in the story. And you guessed it, when we ask ourselves why, we can tap into this power of visual communication. Let's take the example from the intro, the one with the main character that's got a burn scar over his left eye. Why would we have made that design choice? Well, the scar may represent a pivotal moment in a battle from his past, which has shaped his resilience and determination. This visual element instantly communicates to the audience that this character has faced hardships and is battle-hardened. Whether he won that battle or not, it doesn't really matter. Also, when we think about the why for each design choice, we can carefully select visual elements that align with the genre that we're writing in, the setting, and the themes of our story. This creates a cohesive visual language that enhances the overall atmosphere and immerses the audience deeper into the narrative world. 
Basically, it communicates the world we build to our audience. And I know we all spend a lot of time world building, so this is important. Now, how do we use all of this in our creative process in a more practical sense? There's about four steps that I use, and I really want to share them with you to see what you think too. So let's dive into them right now. Step one, really understand your character's background and personality. I always say this is the starting point for basically everything in character design. Before starting the design process, take some time to really get to know your character's backstory, their motivations, and their personality traits. This is really the foundation of that character and it's gonna guide every single choice you make for them. It's gonna help you create a visual representation that aligns with that character's real essence. Step two, think about symbolism and metaphors. Consider the symbolism and visual metaphors that can be incorporated into your character's designs. This is a really cool technique because it's really subtle, but when a reader or the audience realizes the metaphor, it's really impactful. So think about objects, colors, or patterns that can convey specific traits or story elements. By intentionally selecting visual cues, you're really gonna create not only much more narrative significance for that character, but cool moments when the audience realizes that that appearance thing is actually tied to something metaphorical. Step three, the whole point of this video, the why. Challenge yourself and really justify the inclusion of every visual element for your main characters, your main side characters, and other characters that you see fit to do it for. Consider how everything you add really contributes to that character's story and their personality. Do this only if it makes sense. Not every character needs a deep story for everything that appears on them, so use in moderation. And step four, and this is really character design in essence, iterate and refine. You know, designing characters is really a process and you're inevitably gonna make a ton of changes even when you think you love what you came up with. So don't be afraid to experiment and make adjustments. You know, look at your characters over and over again, consider what you've done and maybe what you would change, ask yourself why, and refine the appearance until it's to a point where you're really satisfied. The iterative approach will help you create a character that is really visually compelling and that your audience is gonna love and will leave an impact on them. So we've made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've learned a little bit about designing characters and about why asking why is really important when you're doing designs. And if you like this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'm trying to build a community of indie mangakas who are writing and developing stories, and I'm trying to do it all while building my own manga, Yield Treehouse. So I'll see you next time. Bye.